Welcome everybody to the latest Mix Master release. This is C, aka Animism, aka C Pilot. It's become a bit of a hybrid mix, this song Gnosis. I'm sort of, I'm not 100% satisfied with details like um, drum parts and, and certain sort of sounds, but I've come to the point where I, I need to start wrapping up this production, trying to get back on schedule to finish it up, master it, release it by the end of this month, and we're nearly halfway through October. And so I would like to start, I would start to more consciously mixing as I finish the other parts up. And for me, what, what that means is I, I do gain stage when I'm, I'm ready to take a mix seriously and to get the levels. It works for me. It's, it's like it, it's, it's good for me and so that's what i gotta do now and i've i don't do it like i do it once per track i turn off all the effects so things are either bypassed or have also and or switch them off at the source all the eq i've turned off all the high pass filters, all the low pass filters, everything. So so for gain staging, the way that I learned it and the way that I practice it, um, it's 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 based on mathematics and I suppose physics from when there was analog equipment and you were uh, an analog tape to be more specific. And then instruments or sound sources that were run into machines the sweet spot was a particular minus 18 point db fs without the point but you get the point so and i learned and i practice it and uh you can do it right at the beginning you can do it before the final final mix but for this, I need to progress it along, especially with the accountability of recording these how-tos. So to the seven people listening, I thank you. We're going to begin gain stage. This is like, yeah, if you are watching this, we're going to gain stage channel by channel. And okay, so what's the, what's the objective? So as I'm trying to get levels under control to be able to send off to mastering in whatever shape or form that might be. So I'm aiming for minus six on my meter here to give mastering and and that's on uh, that's peak and that's that's not always the easiest thing to do especially when you got drum transients and all these other things and you're trying to find problems and solve and sort problems so what i found was actually easier it was when it was ready to uh get serious about mixing so mix time i'm gonna gain stage it i'm gonna get the volumes going and right then i'm gonna start putting any EQ, any EQ or other processing and try to keep the volume and gain around the same and starting to, to keep that in mind and then problems will invariably crop up with the same old same old things but before I start side chaining properly and leaving space for the tracks and really doing the proper EQ stuff I've, I've progressed from the demo uh, the arrangement is 99% you know and there's still sound so I'm going to leave it in MIDI for now and I'm still gonna I'm still gonna hammer away at it over the week to come, uh, sort of like that end of month. It's all gotta get done deadline. So okay, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself. I'm gonna, but I'm I'm really getting in the mindset to get this done properly. So and then my mixer arrangement, uh, typically in Reason, is very common and similar to me. So I know when I uh, any mixer of any project that especially checks that I've developed a bit more. The, the color coding for groups and sort of like a lower instrument, a higher instrument, all of that is sort of, it's been, it's been honed over, over years. And then the, the placement on the, the virtual mixer, this SSL mixer, sort of the reverse that I would probably do in some ways in a live setup for sure. But I, I have the drums all the way over to the right. I put everything through a mix down bus at the end. And then of course there's the 
master bus. Well, all of this stuff is off for the time being. So the objective, I want to get each check, each channel uh, to be around minus 18 dBFS on the meter. MV meter 2.1 is what I've got. TB Pro Audio. Good, it's free. And maybe your DAW has one of these. And Reason doesn't really. I wouldn't count the master compressor. Master bus. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just going to go from um, left to right. I've picked the loudest portion of the song, the highest energy portion of the song. And normally for a final mix, like, and then doing the gain stage or pull, pulling all the faders down and then building up the the mix for the sort of the like the highest octane energy part of the mix and then i will go away to other sections and and sort of like build up to wh where we've gotten but i'm not sure that's going to happen on this hybrid part i just want to gain stage properly y yeah get a get a general balance mix but i know that i've got a i got a bit of hacking away at this track to to get it to sit where i want so let's just get the gain staging done why don't we and um, just because it's more fun than the Bambalong, we'll start with, let's just see what the overall drums are. Drums are tricky because of the transients. That's like, that's line up real excellent. I didn't reset all the gain at the top of the Reason X SSL mixer. I didn't reset them all to zero. So, um, so let's see drums. Okay, so one of them I already brought down a couple of decibels. And the kick, of, I've dropped down a couple of decibels as well. Okay, so it's, it's already, without me having to do anything, it's sort of peaking for the entire drum kit of what I want. But also... See where the kick is sitting. The kick is one of these ones that I did drop two decibels and it's minus 1.1 so let's just let's just see the kick is uh, is invariably going to be adding uh, some some sort of meaty processing i suppose there'll, there'll, be, there'll be decapitators all over the drums and the kick itself so it's still picking let's just, you know, okay so i don't mind if this is just like a tad under shift and it does a little more micro okay I'm satisfied with that let's move right along so the kick and what about the loops parts And, and these drums are not finished yet, so that's why. But the, the kick is done and the accompanying loops, I, I know the basis of that. And you can tell, like, see, hear those super loud sounds? Well, you can tell that channel hasn't been gate staged yet. And otherwise it's a, it's a horrible sound. So, um just to keep from more interesting to mm, obscure let's try the bass pretty massive uh, already I can hear things that I want to correct in it like is there reverb on this 
is none. Now they're in. We're getting sidetracked. Let's get back to gang staging and then we can have fun with sounds. But the bass is... The bass can be my nemesis, I've got to say. And I've already dropped it four and a half. And it's five over, so we're going to pull it down to ten under. totally doesn't have to be the most accurate thing ever. It's just going to get in the range. There's a lot of energy in this bass track. And still, we've got to filter it, and we've got to cut a lot of that low rumble that's, that's contributing to this, and so we'll probably then build the bass back up. So, that's the bass channel. It doesn't take that long, see? <laughs> You're like, why? Well, just move it along. <laughs> It's the thing, the weird thing about this song to me is like a lot of the individual sounds by themselves I don't really care for but having selected them like in, in the context of the overall mix there's just something about it I like um okay so I had to turn it down this is going to be ear splitting perhaps see it is too loud Especially, it's like six on the left. So, using the gain at the top, come down by around six. It's such a runaway sound as well. It's definitely doing, it's much heavier on the left. Rookie mistake. Could be a sound I put compression on later, because at times it gets a bit like there, under control a bit. I'll check the volume automation, so... Gonna bring it down another decibel or so. And also the advantage of MIDI as well. I, I'm gonna do it now because it just, well, you remember. I do use the grouping system here. There's always so many things that could be done. Is this, is this this like micro editing and stuff like this? I think it's just the trenches of of needing to. It's working quickly, but when we record stuff, I, I, I don't usually just draw lines into the sequencer grid. I like playing the parts into it. Because one, I can I can play them like I can I, I have a better chance playing what it, what what I'm thinking or what I can feel than uh, the grid approach. But it's a it's a good reminder. Okay, so nothing else is too hard up here. Cool. So back to it. So then I'm satisfied with that one, and we know we're going to pan that off to the left because it was dominant on the left. The song. Yeah, another one of these sounds that by itself, I'm like, what is this doing? Like, why? Why is it in the song? Just needs a little bit down on the game. And it's got this warbly thing on it that I'm not so thrilled about.
a little bit of the mod wheel was on. And then it was exacerbated by some distortion in the mix there. Okay. And I don't mind that that's under too, because it's not my favorite sound by itself. And it's, it's there's a lot of little background um, parts to this one. It is a different kind of animism track, as most of them seem to be. Was it experimental? It just came together quickly in the wake of Teenage Fugue. Okay, so now yet another, this is probably the most obscure of the lot. A bicep is like, this. you build a song around this thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. What? And then... I also like when, when I write lines, like let's say that there's a, a cello line, a violin line, a horn, any bass, every, everything. I, I imagine the live player performing the piece. And then that's why it's got to be interesting for them, right? Like it, it's got to be like and good. And they're like, wow, this is challenging. And this, oh, this is good. And I actually like the music they're playing. Um, fortunately, I don't know how many Bamblong players there are. So I don't know if, how we're going to do that live, actually. But this thing is just like, how would you even describe it? It's really quiet, though. And so, if we're going to follow the laws of gain staging, though it means we just jack it up like this. So the gain staging is more appropriate at the latter parts. Again, we'll look if we can correct this. And I, once the gain staging is done, which I think might even be, it might, it's done. I think it's done. one channel we didn't do and so in a lot of songs I I experiment with putting noise in the back of them but this one definitely needs a high pass filter and it, one of those marvelous things if if it's the right noise it's sort of just it, it lurks in the back of the track. It can be synced out. It can do a lot of, it can interact with the piece in a lot of different ways. But I find then, after you sort of, you just, you put it on a bit, and then at some point you turn it off and play it, and then it's, and, and test it on and off. It's like, which one sounds better? It's the noise one just seems to have this little bit more body to it. As for gain staging, there is no way. I have no interest in, um, like I've got it, the decapitator is off. A decapitator is, is here purely for harmonics, because otherwise without it on. This signal is a lot quieter, but that, that's some of the subtle stuff uh, we can do in the backdrop of, of songs or uh, the automation parts is like for the quieter sections or maybe vibrating some sections as well, but when it hits that climax, that super light climax just that even though in the whole grand scheme things, you're not going to really be able to hear the difference, but it's, it's going to just unlock something. So I'm going to remember it's, it's been interesting walking and talking through this and I've got now a mental list of ideas of things that like automate the decapitator, right? Automate it. If I just put automate in the track name, that could be the note. I've got a microphone in my face and I can't see. Okay, and I'm gonna turn off the camera. So my dear apologies, because I had no idea that the camera was on and I should have moved it like here. Okay. But we're going to keep talking our way through. The gain staging is complete. Okay, and noises are there. 
Okay, and now, now we're going to do it. We're going to build the first balanced mix. I had balanced it when, when I was arranging the track and then starting to play with effects and things, and I hadn't gained staged yet, but I, I got volumes to an acceptable level. That's that sort of thing, too, when it's tested on other speakers. it's It hasn't been mixed at all, and it's really apparent stuff that jumps out and... Um, which is it's a, I like I like doing it as a test, printing music, putting putting on a little playlist of stuff I'm working on, and then while I'm in the kitchen, while I'm preparing food, cooking dinner, whatever, if I don't need a complete mental break from it, I'll, I'll happily listen to a playlist of that and make me, uh, some mental notes. You listen to stuff. I, at least if I listen to stuff enough times, um, I can get in touch with what irks me about certain things and. Um, and moments that of impact. All right. So, well, so the next thing, let's just bring it all down here. This does mean that, and this is this is what I'm um, reluctant, and why I was reluctant to to do this this phase of it now. Pulling down all the sliders, we're at the, the probably the high impact part of the of the track. To me, this is, I still have some work to do, and so automating volumes and levels and things like that, I'm not quite ready for that, so I might have to do the, the fader pull down again anyway. But what we can do before automation is, in this high impact part of the track, um, once those levels are established, for now, that's, that's, the, that's how they're going to be. And then playing the song from beginning to end, now the mental notes of where what needs to be quieter, when that's the automation. We've done the, the gain staging, so then now we're automating just the faders on the mixer, right? Because the gain coming into it, that's going through the plugins, which are being manipulated in a different way, maybe adding volume, maybe subtracting volume, maybe... Um, the sky's the limit of imagination on that. So let's get back into the simpler task. And and again, the way that I learned from a few places, and then I started to practice, introducing the most, I think, important part first, like the thing I think that's gonna stand out. So with vocal music, that's usually the vocal, but my music is very instrumental. And usually I start with, say, the drums, the bass, Let's, uh, you know, I, I haven't even thought how we're going to start this one here. So the buses will come up because the tracks going into them are all down. My master mix down channel, which I don't, I don't know if anyone else does that, but I just, I like having all the channels here into one channel on the end. And no, I don't try to cheat the minus six that we're going to aim for by mastering time. I don't. And I know that I can just drop it down there, but it, it, I I want to I want to get to the source of this thing and usually lop off drum transients to keep things. But we're gonna have that sort of um, fun maybe next week. All right, so let's get into it. So four. Okay, so I'm playing. We can't hear anything because we're also in the wrong part. It should be playing, but it's not because all the channels are down. I really like the bass in this track. I know it's so whooshy and whirr and we're going to spend too much time later on it, but is it even the main part of this song? It's so nice. That and I've got mentors that will say, okay, what's the focus part of this? This is the second... That's the lead part in a way. That's complimentary, the brass sort of choir. And it's definitely not the bamboo. Oh, it's, oh, it drives me nuts. It could also be, let's get the kick done.
And the, the cool thing about the, now that the kick is done and I have turned off all the processing, there's no compression or anything going into it. It's been gain staged. And now if, if this is like a, a kick centric track or the kick is just, it is meant to bang, then this can be the starting track and then we're going to build up other things around it. I, 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 to be completely transparent, I am making decisions on the fly now. I haven't pre-planned any of this, so there will be a bit of C, aka animism experimentation. But maybe rather than just build the drums up right away, we can get the first interaction of the kick and the bass. And it might... It, I am hearing little, little MIDI touch-ups that I want to do. Now it's that unity. How's that, huh? And this is without any EQ or uh, checks making way for each other. I did it. That tiny little panning switch where the brass fades off to the to the left side. And then the movement track is now on the right, so I will reverse the one. Press save. So, well, thank you for uh, listening, watching this far. There's more work we gotta do on it, but this is good for now. And good luck in your project you're working on. I wanted to show the effects of our gain staging and how it's shaped the waveform. So I printed a mix and as you can see, it's, it's a pretty flat waveform and there's only, I can see one, there might be 
a couple or several peaks that are above minus 6 dB FS, which is what I aim for and is widespread advice to aim for before you send a, a mix to mastering. And so I can see one here and maybe one here. But otherwise, gain staging completely helped with getting the mix to a reasonable level. And it's encouraging because that means with so few peaks that poked out above minus six, they can be dealt with uh, a little more smoothly. It, maybe a, a little bit of clipping, maybe the effects of, of compression, say if it's on uh, the drum bus. And because there's only a few peaks, perhaps even volume or gain automation and those hits just coming down a little bit as well. So this is what the shape of the waveform looks like after gain staging and then all the mix moves that are going to be done, the side chain compression, uh, EQ, uh, creating space for tracks, and uh, some of the other effects. This is a fantastic place to start with, and thanks to gain staging, I don't have to worry so much about how I'm going to get all these many peaks below minus 6 dBFS. That saved me a lot of time and work, so we're closer to getting the mix finished and off to mastering. Good luck in your own projects, and we'll speak again soon.